Hello there, everyone. This is Quiversy, and welcome back to more Metroid Prime. Last time, we explored more of the Fendrana Drifts with the power of our space jump and wave beam, found ourselves into Research Lab Hydra, and after blasting away a mountain of space pirates, gained access to the Super Missile. Uh, and as you can see, while I was getting things set up for this next part, uh, something got scanned. You don't say. I was going to be heading that way anyhow. So, yeah. Next up, we are going to be heading out. But first, I want to scan these. All holo technicians report to the main observatory. Maintenance required on both holo modules. And Chief Astrogation Officer feels our current dual holo projector system is obsolete. Please review and advise. Riveting. We did, no, 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 I don't need to. We already did that. Whew. So that door is where it wants me to go. However, I'm going to backtrack first for one thing real quick. Because I believe it was just the room prior to this. Hello, Mr. The Turrets. I'm not going to fight you right now. We're going in here. Come on. There it goes. Was it in here? It was. Okay, I gotta at least fight this. Still gonna use the wave beam on the pirates. Just a little more. A little more. Okay, he dead. He dead. Get rid of you. And now, time for our new toy. We charge up the power beam. And boom! That is a super missile. And we've seen that this be this thing here is made of cordite. Boom! We can destroy it and get a missile pack. Heck yeah! Alright, pirates, I'm out. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's let you guys enjoy your theme song on your own time. Boom. Technically, that is a waste of missiles doing the super missiles for those, since I can not only kill them with charged beams, but also with, like, three regular missiles. But not only is it way more convenient to just be done with them in one shot, it's just really freaking satisfying. <sighs> Regardless, now that that's done, let's make progress, shall we? So, we want to go through this door now. Ah, more bombus. Go away. Got him. And crystallites. Kill that. Whoa, okay. Gotta be careful when these bombs get close because I mess with your doggone visor. Which is annoying, but also pretty cool. And this is an elevator to the control tower. This is... Is this a full loading screen or no? No, it's not. Okay, it just it looks like that kind of elevator, so I wasn't sure. Right then. Now we're in an outdoorsy area. Complete with more pirates. That's a regular pirate. Wasn't sure. Okay, pirates out in the snow. Let's duel. Boom. Come on. Come on. Lock on. There we go. Luckily, they're also dropping missiles for me. That's awful nice of them. Get rid of you. Pirates down. But now we got them flying pirates. They're back. But now they're here to actually fight. Gonna shoot them down. They stun just like any other pirate. 
but uh, they also explode when they die. He was trying, that guy was trying to do something else too, but he was on the ground, so he just kind of exploded. But when we scanned them, we were given a warning about what happens when their packs fail. Oh, he didn't do it either. Uh, wait, is it because I'm stunning them with the wave beam? That might be it. You know what? Just, just for you. We're gonna switch to the charge of the power beam. Ugh. Let's uh, see what happens when they're not stunned and they get obliterated. Come on, come on. You know you want to. Uh oh, I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. Okay, super missile. There it is. Oh man, he killed his friend. <laughs> but yes, they do a kamikaze dive bomb and they explode at the end of it. But I never knew, actually, that the wave beam was enough to stop that. In truth, I actually thought it was the other way around. See, I thought that would happen with the wave beam. Oh, no, there he goes. So they still kind of do it. Like, I thought that it was caused by the wave beam. Because, like, you know how it makes the turrets go all crazy? I thought it did the same thing for the jetpacks. But what it seems to actually do is limit their movement and control over their own kamikaze. Which is pretty interesting. There's something in there, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing in here. I thought there was. Uh, maybe it's in there I'm thinking of. Huh? Easy enough to find out. Oh, there's some boxes. I didn't get any health pickups. Oh, wait, maybe I can break that. Yeah, I need extreme heat. Okay. So, I'll have to come back to that later. I have no idea what's in there. I just, I remembered there being something. Access to Research Lab Aether. So now we are getting near the end of this area. As we are hitting the highest security research lab. There are those doggone bamus. I am so gonna die. I hear the sound of an upgrade. Ooh. But that is a Metroid. Never a good sign when those are around. Metroid. Energy-based parasitic predator. The dominant species of planet SR388. Metroids can suck the life force out of living things. A Metroid will latch onto its prey and drain energy, growing larger as it does. The only way to shake an attached Metroid is to enter Morph Ball mode and lay a bomb. And it's free. So yeah, it gets hold of you, drains your energy, you gotta turn into a Morph Ball. Luckily, we are able to kill it. Normally they are invincible unless you have specific weapons, but we don't have those weapons right now. Okay, you know what, Mr. Metroid? You're dangerous. You get a missile of super. I actually don't know if my beam was doing anything, truth be told. I might have needed to use a missile all along. I am going to die, Mr. Pirate, and you are not helping things. Please drop health. Not what I needed. <sighs> Let's read some pirate data. Initial transfer of Metroids to Talon 4 research facilities has been completed. Three were terminated in an incident at the landing site, but the others were pacified and transported safely. Initial phase-on infusion testing is underway. We are eager to observe the effects of phase-on on Metroids. 
especially their ability to absorb and process the energy given off by Phazon sources. Early research suggests a considerable growth in power and size. Whether the creatures stay stable thereafter remains to be seen. I'll give you three guesses how well that went. Metro containment fields appear 100% effective after adjustments. Temperatures below 10 degrees centigrade will render Metroids docile. Yes, true to form, Metroids do not like cold temperatures. The hooked mandibles of the Metroid penetrates the skin of its prey and siphon pure life force energy. Internal organs of Metroid seem to be limited to nucleonic absorption cells and massive energy reservoirs. Metroid brain scans results in. Studies show accelerated activity in paracial lobe ugh, during hunting cycles at temperatures above 10 degrees centigrade. Yep, that is how the Metroid work. Another log. The reconstruction of Geoform 187, codenamed Ridley, was recently completed. After his defeat on Zebus, Command ordered a number of metagenic improvements for him. Though aggressive, we were able to implement these changes into a cycle. The metamorphosis was painful, but quite successful in the end. Early tests indicated drastic increase in strength, mobility, and offensive capability. Cybernetic modules and armor plating have been added as well. We believe our creation, now called Metaridly, will become the mainstay of our security force. A job he will certainly relish. And getting some insight into Ridley. And uh, that's just showing containment fields were cold. As you do. That's the room... Did I... No, this is a new room. I'm an idiot. For some reason, I thought I'd been here and that was where an upgrade was. Whoa! No, 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 no. I am very much in danger of dying. Ugh. Okay. And there it goes. Welp. I guess I'll meet you back there. Okay, back here where I died. Just beat the Metroid. Now it's time to face off the pirates. As you can see, I'm doing much better on my health. Uh, big reason for that being that I went, I still went back to get my missile expansion and that Cordite tube. Uh, but this time I saved after I did it. And the boxes in the room with the flying pirates had a lot more health in it for me this time. So, a little bit of luck. These are giving me some nice uh, hit points, too. All right, pirates. Let's get this going. I don't think I ever scanned this. I've never. I have never scanned this. Literally. Ooh. Confidence is high regarding Phazon applications. We know enough about Phazon now to begin combining it with space pirate DNA. The code name for this venture will be Project Helix. Preliminary studies indicate that phase-on infusion could produce radical new pirate genomes. Benevolent mutation levels are high in current test subjects. Phase-on madness is a concern, but refinements in the infusion process should reduce or neutralize the odds of mental degeneration. Yeah, these guys are insane. As energy-based creatures, Metroids show immediate mass increases upon energy absorption. Good to know. All guards must use ice containment gear when transporting Metroid. This includes sedated specimens and those pronounced dead. Never a good idea to take chances with Metroids. Directive. In the event of a Metroid attack, repel creature with missiles set to maximum concussion. In short, that's there to tell you missiles are generally a good idea against Metroids. That being said, I did confirm that the beam weapon was hurting it before because I... On that, on that last one, I opened with a super missile without having fired my beam and it didn't die. Whereas when I shot it with a super missile last time, or the first time... It, uh, it died after I had shot it a bunch, so. The beam does hurt it. Anyways, we are almost done with the pirates in this room, it would seem. There we go. Phew. Metroids and few of phase on strain vertigo are thriving. We feel they could be class one energy harvesters if proper submission and measures are employed. So it seems this Vertigo strain was one of their most successful batches of this stuff. This tank holds the remains of Experiment 7526. Conversion of Elite Pirate unsuccessful. 
This is what happens when they tried to infuse Phazon into one of their own kind. It didn't seem to work at first. What is up with my buttons? I see that upgrade and I'll get it in a minute. But first, Space Pirate Data. Metroid Dissection continues to provide more questions than answers. Our research teams have isolated the energy conduits that run from the invasive twin mandibles to the energy core in the creature's quadripid, quad, quadripartite nucleus. That is... that is a word. But the manner in which a Metroid actually extracts the life force from its prey remains an utter mystery. The victim does not lose blood or any other vital fluids, and yet the Metroid exacts, extracts energy. Identifying this energy is our central problem. It takes no physical form, and yet without it, the victim dies. We will continue to research this matter as as the button gets unpressed and I lose my place. We will continue to research this matter as the isolation of this life-giving essence could be the key to our ascendance. You know, you have a point on that one. Quarantine specimens exhibiting highly aggressive behavior. Its body bleh, bleh. I cannot talk today. Its body structure composed of phase on ore appears nearly invulnerable. This has rendered our efforts to train and discipline subject useless. Mm. Yeah, hard to train something that's invincible. Project Titan is suspended indefinitely. Security breaches resulting in massive casualties have occurred. Access is strictly prohibited until further notice. Again, we're talking about this Project Titan. East Quarantine Cave has been secured. The specimen remains in the quarantine area. All experiments have been suspended pending pacification of area. Studies of Metroid biology continue, though with limited progress. It seems likely that we will be much more successful using the Metroids for our means rather than trying to reproduce their powers. If they could be adequately tamed, we would have no need of a proper understanding of their metabolism. A small force of disciplined Metroids could wipe out entire armies, and once we find a way to shield them from cold containment weapons, they will be invincible. Furthermore, if we could then harvest the energy they consumed, we would have a near limitless source of power at our disposal. If only you actually knew what that power was. Okay, so energy tank, it doesn't tell us how to get it. If I remember right, this thing doesn't break. I did not remember right. It didn't even need a super missile. It just needed a missile missile. Anyways, that is more health for us. Oh wait, can I just break all of these? I can. And now I shall. I don't think I can break that though. Yeah, it's a little bit big. And there's another Metroid. Yeah, I want to see something. Phase on infusion, stage six. Subject Metroid BR5497. Those letters almost make it look like it just said brains. Subject's mass at 180% of the previous phase on cycle, increasing dosage by 4%. Let's see what happens when I kill it. Hello, Metroid. How are you doing today? Have a super missile. No, no, no. Don't have a Samus snack. I said have a super missile. Okay. Now that you're injured, I'm going to explode you. Now, what does this say now? Doesn't doesn't change to imply that it's dead. If I see 012 is contaminated, bound accessible safety standards, remove immediately. Um, I mean, I broke it. How, how well removed is that? There's an upgrade up there. Okay, hold on. Well, let, let's turn on this elevator first. I need to head back up a bit. Pop. Hmm. hmm. I see. <sighs> Whoa. We got ourselves a narrow morph ball path. These are always so unnerving. Whoa, okay. Easy does it. Luckily, we don't retain much of our momentum when we just go in little bursts like this. And missiles. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Back on our merry way, though. Let's uh, continue on. Oh, hey, look at that. Where'd it go? There you are. Ice Beetle. 
burrowing insect with an ice-reinforced carapace, adverse to heat. This member of the beetle family has adapted to life in the sub-zero temperatures and the Fendrana drifts, growing a thick ice shell over its entire body. The ice is extremely resilient, providing the ice beetle with extra protection and augmented digging abilities. In other words, it is basically the same as the beetle, only it is stronger and its digging around is a lot faster. So it's, it's just a tougher version of the beetle. Makes sense to me. Yeah, we heard about them before, but we hadn't actually encountered them yet. Anyways, welcome to the research core of the of the lab, complete with more Metroids behind some more durable stasis fields, and of course pirates. You know, as you do, sir. I wouldn't advise using jetpacks indoors. You're liable to cause an incident, especially with how easy and prone the malfunction they are. Just food for thought, Mr. Pirate. At any rate, I'm pretty sure. So remember when I mentioned before when I got when we got the super missile that I thought it was going to be a different item? Yeah, I thought it was this the item that's in here. So first things first, let's get rid of that. And for it, super missile. In here. Force field network active around object. All three force fields must be deactivated to access object. That object in there is the item I thought we were going to get when we got the super missile. Turn off that one. Turn off this one. Inform command that thermal vision tests will begin soon. Abnormal heat traces are represented as red when looking through the thermal imaging spectrum. That was not a force field. Thermal visor interfaces will be sent to quarantine area. These visors will be useful for any personnel involved in transport of the unstable test subject there. So it's not as simple as just scanning the three things surrounding it. I actually don't remember what else I need to do. Oh, it's probably going up here. Thermal imaging software exceeding initial expectations. Combat applications are being evaluated by command. Field testing in Fendrana region approved. Use of prototype visors by security personnel approved. There we go. Auxiliary has been disabled. Only one more barrier remains to protect us from our prize. <sighs> I am not the best at navigating this place sometimes. Though it probably doesn't help when I try to do shortcuts like that. <laughs> but still. There's no pirates left in here, so it's not like we're in danger. Here we are. Testing of thermal imaging software complete. Commence download to tactical visor prototype for field testing. Central tank control circuit connection terminated. And with that, and with all this talk, I think it's quite clear what we're about to get. The Thermal Visor. Our first visor upgrade. Thermal Visor acquired. Press minus then point to the left to activate the visor. Use the Thermal Visor to search for cold and hot objects and hidden wave beam targets. This is honestly one of the coolest things that Metroid Prime does is the visor upgrades. And it's something that can only be done in the first person 3D environment. I feel. Anyways, now that we've acquired that, it's pitch black, and we got some shadow pirates in here. If we switch over to the thermal visor, look at that! We can see their heat signatures! And everything goes all purple over the wise. So it even gives us a bit of night vision, because it's much easier just to see in general. Now, if everything was the same temperature and it was all just like purple, that would be a different story. But it does make fighting these guys so much easier. Because now, yeah, they're shadow pirates, so they can turn invisible, but it doesn't matter when all the energy that their things produce makes it so that we can just see them like this. I also should just be using the wave beam. Ah. 
So yeah, welcome to the thermal visor. Let's uh, give it a little read, shall we? The thermal visor allows you to see in the infrared spectrum. Hot objects are bright in the visor, while colder ones are dim. The thermal visor will show the weak points of certain foes. Use the thermal visor to see in total darkness and poor weather conditions. Brightly lit areas, explosions, and intense heat can impair the thermal visor. Enemies with temperatures close to their surroundings will be tough to spot with this visor. Yeah. So, like, if, say, the crystallites, for example. They are literally just walking around with big old ice shells on their back. And they're walking around in cold environments. Ain't gonna be able to do anything about that. Anyways, we have ourselves another door here, but... As you can see, it is a white door. Can't really do anything about that. But with our new thermal visor, we can easily see these platforms as they do exude some bit of heat. And Metroids are breaking out. Lovely. Well, let's, uh... Let's blast them down. Thankfully, they also exude a fair amount of heat. Makes sense, considering how much they don't like it when it gets cold. I'm just gonna see how many wave buster shots it takes. Nah! Get off of me! Yeah, unfortunately, when you go into morph ball mode, it does undo your visor. So I have to reapply it, but because it is such an easy thing, it's just hold down minus and aim a little to the left. It's hardly a big deal. At any rate, uh, yeah, no, super missile, go away. Looks like one charge beam shot and one super missile is enough to kill the Metroids. That's good to know. Oh, I see something up there. Okay, well, we'll have to get closer to it. Because that is indeed something else that we can do, courtesy of our new thermal visor. Uh, yeah, there's another Metroid. Super missile! So, I can't scan this, unfortunately, because if I go to the scan visor, there's nothing there. But, if I scan this, this door has no power. A nearby power conduit must be energized for it to open. A blast of electrical energy will energize the conduit. The conduit radiates some heat that is invisible to the normal spectrum. We've seen that text before, and this is what it means. When you see a glowing object like this that you can't see otherwise, it means there's a power conduit inside the wall. If you charge that spot with electrical energy, Suddenly, the door has power again, and we can leave. I somehow managed to get lost. Our visor is getting uh, a bit scrambled, it seems. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that. Ah, that right there makes sense, because we just got hit with some hot weaponry. And you saw, as you saw, it kind of blinded us for a moment. That is the weakness of using the thermal visor in the event of uh, high temperature opponents. You can have a hard time. Oh, we didn't even scan these before. It's like, wait a minute, is that an air pirate? No, it's not, it's a sentry drone. Well-armed and armored security mecha. Sentry drones have limited intelligence, but do their assigned task well. Being machines, they are susceptible to electrical attacks. When alerted, drones initiate a security lockdown, then attempt to neutralize the intruder. Their electronic warfare suit can scramble visor tech as well. That's what's going on. It's this enemy that does it. You know, we can't really get a good look at them. Like, I, I legitimately thought for a moment that they were just air pirates. Oh, we got more pirate going on around here. Yeah, I don't know why taking the thermal visor suddenly just shut off all the lights. But here we are, fighting in the dark with our new thermal imaging. On a side note, the thermal visor just makes... It, it just looks so doggone cool. Mm, but you can also see that turret right there isn't giving off any extreme heat signatures. So I was able to see it because of the muzzle flare and the fact that I was able to lock onto it. But otherwise, it was relatively invisible. And that's the kind of thing to be on the lookout for. Like, I wouldn't have been able to really track where its bullets were coming from because of that. You know, at least while I was fighting the pirates and stuff, as opposed to it. 
Okay. Get rid of the pirate. Ride the elevator and... Wait, what? Uh... Okay. That dude has some skills. Uh, a shame that he devoted his life to being a space pirate. I mean, I say that, but really, space pirates... They're not just an organization. They're a species. I wonder. I actually don't remember if they do or not. Do they refer to themselves as space pirates? Like, what is the actual name of their species? I have to wonder. Because, like, I don't imagine that they were born and decided that they were called space pirates from day one, right? It might just be a moniker. I, I like to think of it as a moniker that they've just been given because of their actions that they now pretty much embrace. But what is their actual species called? I don't know. Hmm. Something to think about for the future, maybe. At any rate, these Bamus ain't much of a problem in the dark. Because they definitely emit a lot of heat. Right now, we're just kind of on the trip back. <sighs> back outside, we no longer need the thermal imaging to see what we're doing. I mean, we could, but we don't need it. It's actually nice and bright out here. Get rid of the stupid sky pirates. Actually, you know... I'm gonna ignore the Sky Pirates. Have fun. I don't need to fight y'all. And is the power out in here? Yup, power's out in here. We're back in the darkness. It's kinda neat how you can also see the outlines of the doors in it, so you can see the doors and stuff through the walls. That is one thing that does trip me up sometimes with the thermal imaging visor, is the fact that you can see through walls, at least walls within the same room, like, you know, this thing is emitting a lot of heat, but I couldn't see into it from the other side of the door. But that's just because it doesn't load yet. At any rate, with our new thermal imaging visor and our super missiles, there's a couple of major things we can do. Specifically, one thing in particular that is also part of Fendrana Drifts. And next time on Metroid Prime, we're gonna go deal with it. Thank y'all so much for watching. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs>